Okay, it's time for some hints on things you can do with your horde game. As you remember in the first video, we uh, talked about how you take a simple chase game and turn it into something a little bit more menacing by using the cloning tool. Well, that's well and good, but how do we turn that into a game? What are some of the things that we might add to make this game like? The first thing we might think about doing is uh, finding out how many uh, times the cat has been caught. Uh, as you can see in the script, um, if the if the bug touches, if one of the clones touches uh, the cat, um, then it broadcasts a message to say caught. Um, if we want to count this up, we need to create a variable. Um, variables are listed under data, and as you can see, when you first go to data, there's nothing there, but we create a variable. So we're going to create this variable of So once I create a variable, you can see the variable is put on the screen, and then we get several blocks that we can use with that variable. And if I don't want it on the screen, I have to uncheck this box here. Ooh. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, now, first what I need to do is probably set the uh, variable to be zero at the beginning. You always want to set your variables at the beginning of the game. Um, and every time uh, the uh, cat gets caught, we can change this variable by one. So that will count up the number of times that the cat gets caught. All right, let's take a look at how this works here. Okay, I've got my cat and lots of bugs coming to get it. And every time a bug touches it, um, that variable goes up. Okay, so to turn that into a game, then I need to, of course, be checking that variable and seeing when that variable gets too high and the game is gonna be over. Uh, if you look at the cat script here, we're going to need to uh, create a loop that's running all the time. So, of course, we'll start this on the green flag, and we'll run forever. And we just want to check and see, have we been caught too many times? So, uh, we have a variable called times caught, and we need to know if that number gets too high. So, we need to know a greater than or less than. So, I'm going to say, if, and then I use my variable that I've created here, times caught is greater than, and so I can create a number here, say 10, if I'm caught 10 times. Now notice I don't use equals here. Um, sometimes, because there's a lot of things happening at once, uh, we might jump over the number 10 real fast uh, before the computer has time to check. So it's safer to use a greater than sign here rather than an equal sign. Um, all right, so then once we're caught, then we need to figure out what to do. Uh, and so we would say something like, Uh, all right, hopefully you'll do something much more interesting than this, but you get the idea. Okay, so now we know if the how the cat can get caught, but the cat needs to have some way to defend itself. Now, if you saw a lot of bugs coming at you, what would you do? Maybe you would throw a shoe at it. Uh, that's just what I was thinking. So um, I went out to the internet, find a picture of a shoe. This looks good. Uh, in order to use this into my game, I need to save it to my computer. So I'm going to do a right-click on the shoe and say save image as put that right on my computer oh, it's already there then on my scratch game what i need to do is i need to take that picture and turn it into a sprite and so i'm going to use the new sprite option down here to upload sprite from a file click on that oh there's my shoe right there and i say open so now i've got my shoe on the screen you can see it's a little bit too big so i'll use my shrinking tool at the top of the screen Click on it a bunch of times. Now I've got my shoe a good size. Okay, so now I just need to create a script that's going to uh, have the shoe um, be thrown. I think a good way for the shoe to be thrown is probably uh, when the space key is pressed. Um, let's say initially the shoe would be hidden from view, but then when the space key is pressed, uh, we're going to show it. All right. Now. The shoe would have to start from the cat if the cat is doing the throwing. So we will go to motion and get the go to command. I'll put that before the show probably. That's a good idea. Um, and it'll start at the cat. And then it's going to need to be thrown in some direction. So how are we going to um, uh, set the direction? One way to do that would be to use the mouse uh, as a way to direct the shoe. So we could say, uh, I want to point towards 
the mouse pointer. And then to, to do the throw, we would simply have to create some kind of a motion, and we've done that before. So how about we would have a motion? Now we could use a forever or repeat, something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose a slightly different one here. I'm gonna use this repeat until loop. Um, and it's so to make it continue until it, something happens, and I'm gonna say repeat until we're touching the edge of the screen. Okay, so now we've got our shoe and it's going to do something until the edge of the screen. And all we want to do is just have it move forward, something like this. So therefore, if I press the space bar, you can see it's going to throw in different directions. Like so now I can go over to the beetle and I've already got this forever loop going for each of the clones. And it says if I'm touching the sprite, then, then do certain things if I'm touching the cat. But I can also add a second if to say if, and again the same kind of thing, if I'm touching and oh I see I got the name of the shoe, uh, name of the sprite from the uh, from the picture that I had, Adidas shoe, um, and we'll do the ex uh, something similar. So if the if the if this time if you're touching the shoe, that's simply going to cause the uh, the bug to be deleted. Okay, so now let's see how this works. Okay, I've got lots of bugs coming at me, but if I press my space bar, you can see I've thrown the shoe at them. Hooray, I'm saved from the bugs. All right, so you get the idea. Um, uh, as an extra trick, you might think about actually turning the shoe itself into the clones, so you could have lots of shoes going on. Uh, I'll let you work that one out yourself. Um, but uh, that, that gives you a, a starter on how you can uh, do some kinds of actions to create a horde type game. You could also use some sort of a maze or obstacles that allow the cat to hide. You could have a spot that the cat's trying to escape to. Um, lots of different things that you can do based on stuff we've already talked about in these challenges. All right, good luck. We look forward to seeing what you create.